Hi everyone, Merry Christmas! As you can see with our uh, little decor here, it's a Christmas episode and uh, this is a good one. We're here at Filipino Time and we want to thank all our friends out there who have supported us on our first year anniversary. So cheers to you, Ferds, Albert, Francis, Giancarlo, and thanks from yours truly. So today, we're going to look into some of the questions you popped us on Facebook. So um, about a month ago, we put up a post asking you guys to ask us some questions that you would like us to answer for you. And so there are quite a few responses. Thank you very much for that. But um, in the interest of time, we will only pick maybe three or so questions before we move on to the next topic because this is going to be an action-packed one. So the first question uh, that was asked was by Rafael Montilla. Thanks, Rafael. I like your name. It's my son's name too. Um, he asks, for 15,000 US dollars, what would be your perfect three watch collection? I personally divide it into three categories, sport, chrono slash complication, and dress, but that's just me. What categories would you split the three watches into? Ted, take it away. So I took some time to look at three watches that I would want for $15,000. And um, well, I made some notes here so that I don't make a mistake on the reference numbers. So the first watch is a Tudor Black Bay GMT Pepsi Bessel 79830RB. And well, first is, as you know, Tudor has now created their own in-house movements and they're using the MT5652 on this piece and it has 70 hours. Um, it was a heavy hitter in Basel World 2018 or should I say a bit of an upset because people were expecting yeah. other watches to steal the show but it looks like this guy was the one. 41 millimeters, 200 meters and for those who are not quite into the ceramic bezel yet then this is the one with the aluminum bezel. Mm -hmm. No crown guards and the Pepsi bezel it's kind of like a rich blue and almost like a ruby red it's not really a sharp red yeah. um of course you know it also has the snowflake hands let's not forget the domed glass which gives it a little bit of a classic feel um i also personally like the flat black dial and of course that nice big crown without the i'm sorry the nice big crown with the logo without the crown guards um, so, apart from the GMT, I guess it would be the classic undertones and the fact that it still looks like a real tool watch. Agreed. So that's the first watch. Um, the second watch, again from Tudor, believe it or not, is the Pelagos Blue Titanium M25600TB-001. You see, try, try remembering all those yeah, numbers. But don't worry, Francis, because... There's so much text on the dial, <laughs> it matches the name. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think it's like five lines or six lines. It's, yeah, it's quite You'll see it in the picture. Um, so this time, 42 millimeters, but with 500 meters of water resistance mm -hmm. and a helium escape valve. All right. But that's not yet the best part. So it's in titanium, as I said, so it's very light. And personally, this one deserves a loom shot because even the bezel is loomed. Okay, um, I think the best part, sorry, but I know I keep saying that because I like the watch a lot, um, would be the spring-loaded clasp. Mm, okay. So apart from the fold-out and the, and the sliding mechanism, there's still a spring mechanism so that, you know, the clasp kind of adjusts to you if it's cold, if it's hot, it, you know, it expands. Mm -hmm. um, it also comes with a rubber strap, which right. is a nice touch. And... Um, it's very, very sporty. I really like the way that blue pops. Except, again, like I said, a little bit too much text for me on the dial. Yep. But I love the way the indices, you'll see them in the in the actual watch or in the picture, how they designed the indices that kind of, they're kind of recessed yeah. into the ring. And for my third piece, and I'll tell you why there's this, um, <laughs> is the IWC Pilot's Watch Chronograph Le Petit Prince, 377717. That's the one with the blue dial. So it has a, a 79320 movement with 44 hours. 
43 millimeters. It also has a sliding clasp adjustment, which is great. It's got the chrono. Um, it also has a soft iron inner case, so for some anti-magnetism yep. features. Um, and you just have to see the sapphire glass. It, it has this nice, I guess it's from the anti-reflective coating or whatever. Um, and it just gives you this really classic premium feel, you know, with the chronos and the way the yeah. date the dates because actually you can see several of the dates but there's an arrow and the day now since i still have some money left over from the fifteen thousand dollar you decided to cheat it's not cheating i'm just not following the instructions very well <laughs> it's called I cheating did, okay <laughs> i didn't follow the instructions very well so i wanted to add one last piece and because since i still have some change from my a hypothetical fifteen thousand dollar budget yes I decided to throw in a Seiko SRP789 Turtle Reissue Coke. Mm, okay. Now, why did I throw that in? I think for those that love Seiko and those that have uh, have had or have the turtle, I think they already know why. That's fair. And your turn? Okay, so I didn't cheat, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> and I followed it to the letter of the law. So Raphael was asking for a tool watch or sport yes. watch. He was asking for a chronograph and then a dress watch. Okay. Okay. So for my tool watch, I'm a bit on the fence on this one, but um, I originally thought about the Explorer 2 Polar. Okay. Um, but 42 I, mm. 42, 40, the 42. 42 mm. um, for this exercise, I'm assuming all brand new. Oh, watches. okay. So yes, the 42 Polar, that's the uh, 216570, I believe. And, but I actually, for almost the same money, I would have the black ceramic GMT. Okay. Uh, I believe it is one one six seven ten, um, LN, and so um, give or take the uh, green GMT hand. Yeah, with the green GMT hand, the black ceramic. I think it looks really nice. It's very, uh, it's very classy. They both sort of serve the same function, okay. whereas the Explorer would one uh, two time zones, the um, GMT obviously the three time zones. Um, I'm on the fence with both, but if I had to choose just one, it might be the GMT-2 okay. um, for the sporty uh, tool watch. For the chronograph, it's a very easy answer for me. Um, it's the moon watch. Okay. Uh, Omega's uh, Speedmaster Professional. With the Hesselite. Hesselite, Mind 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 Mind, correct. Uh, with the 1861 caliber, okay. uh, modern one. And um, I think it's fairly self-explanatory. So versatile. Exactly. You can wear it on a strap. You can wear it on the bracelet. You NATO, can Zulu. Anything. Leather. Uh, correct. Looks great with anything. It's, it, if in my opinion, it's one of the best looking watches um, in terms of just the classic proportions and whatnot. And you don't even notice that it's slightly um, uh, asymmetrical mm -hmm. where the, the crown guards actually push out a little bit further on the right side and on the left without the crown. But um, that, to me, is one of the best-looking watches. Nerd and, stuff. Yes, very much so. And obviously the NASA, the NASA stuff, right? So um, that's really, really cool. The last one is, okay, I'm cheating slightly here, but for me, it's the 60th anniversary Urushi Dial Versace Seiko. Okay. And um, that's your dress watch. That's my dress watch. It's actually a chronograph, okay. but um, I don't wear dresses. Well. <laughs> I wonder what I would look, <laughs> but um, being uh, going back to the watch, I think it's a it's the Urushi is just beautiful. The black lacquer, um, the chronographs are uh, the um, sub dials are recessed just How slightly. big is it? How big is that's the... a forty two. Forty two. Actually, all of the watches I just chose are all forty twos, okay. which is the largest diameter that I would wear. I don't think okay. I can pull off anything more okay. than that. So um, those are the three that I would choose, and um, you guys, you can always go back to the thread on the Filipino Time Facebook page and give us your answers as well. So um, thanks a lot for the question, Rafael. Our next question comes from Rod Francis Romero, who asks, what is your opinion regarding micro brands? Um, similarly, uh, Jairus Valencia asks, do micro brands have a chance to succeed, especially with the absence of history and heritage? Um, I personally like uh, having micro brands around. I've owned a Hellgrey and I've owned a Stermansky. Now, micro brands in general uh, refer to watchmakers that have uh, production runs of, you know, I've seen anywhere from 300 below, 1,000 below, 2,000 below, basically small volume, mm -hmm. right? And um, 
for example, Helgri is just a Kickstarter brand. Um, Sturmansky is an old, old brand from Russia that they just resurrected recently. And so I personally like them. Mm -hmm. Maybe the biggest issue with micro brands for a lot of the Filipino uh, watch enthusiasts is that typically when you buy a micro brand, they are quite difficult to sell, especially locally. Like uh, markets abroad, they typically are easier to trade. But I think um, if you like what you like, then yeah. it shouldn't matter, right? Which is basically a big part of this hobby, right? I mean, you, you buy a watch for some, you buy a watch because maybe it makes your heart skip a beat or it makes your hands sweaty or that kind of thing. So if there's no feeling, then why bother? Agreed, agreed. And so um, some guys also uh, can look at micro brands from the opposite end of the spectrum, like um, Kari Vutalainen uh, from Finland, uh, guys like F.P. Schorn, uh, Gronfeld. These are extremely high-end watches, uh, seven figures and up, very easily bespoke, um, very beautifully made. And so there's two ends of the spectrum to the micro brands. And so, um, again, personally, I think uh, they're here to stay. And I really hope to see more micro brands like uh, Ibarra Watches, for example, who was uh, one of our earlier guests. And so the more of that uh, that comes out, I think it's better for the community and the hobby in general. And I guess one last thing for me, Francis, would be um, maybe if you're particular about it, then maybe look into what type of movement they're using. Agreed. And at least that will keep the watch going. I agree. Um, the next question actually, again, is sort of a dual question. And so Dante Florentino Jr. asks, what is your all-time favorite watch that you own and why? Also, what is your dream watch that you haven't owned yet? Thanks. Oh. Um, similarly, Lester Ong asks, if you were to wear only one watch from your collection for the rest of your life, what would it be? No! No! <laughs> please, no! <laughs> Anything but that. No, no, no. <laughs> well, it's, very, it's, it's related really quickly to another post we had from August 19th when we asked you guys, uh, the fans, um, that same question. What would you choose? What watch would you choose to wear for the rest of your life? Um, and I'd like to go through a couple of them, sure. uh, if you wouldn't mind. So, um, Jet uh, Duterte Luga says, having a one watch lifestyle means having to choose a watch that screams versatility. Good point. Um, from the boardroom to the if beach. If I had to choose one watch, I'd be screaming. <laughs> <laughs> screaming versatility. <Yeah. laughs> versatility! No! <laughs> um, his answer is, I think the Omega C Master 300 uh, Master Coaxial uh, would be his choice. Um, another really good answer is from Anton Lorenzo. Um, he says, uh, great topic guys, I had to decide between two watches, uh, 16610 and 16710, and he ultimately chose a 16710, specifically a, a Coke bezel, a GMT Master II. Um, another one, uh, jo uh, Gerald John Esguera says, my favorite for my collection is this, the Baby Grand Seiko SARX 035, um, which I think is a really great choice, it's a great value for money watch. Um, a lot of guys chose various versions of the Submariner, uh, like Charles Dominic S. Dino. Uh, he says, from the beach to the boardroom, and it's just a... It's a well, sub. actually, that was the one piece, which because the earlier question was one piece in your collection that you own. So, sure. I do own a Rolex Submariner Sub-C, 116610LN, and uh, like what he said, from the beach to the boardroom, so you can wear it with your shorts, your yep. board shorts, your cargo shorts, yep. probably a tux. Yeah. And um, it has the in house 3135 movement. As you know, the Submariner was originally launched in 1953. Um, it was worn by James Bond. Although it, it's a little bit polarizing, but for me, Francis, I love the super case. Okay. Whereas I know some other people prefer the older styles. Sure. And, you know, there's this toss up between green and blue on the loom, which, sure. which one people like. Um, also, again, the ceramic bezel, right? It's yep. polarizing if you want the ceramic, you want the aluminum. Sure. Some people say the ceramic doesn't tell a story. The aluminum tells a story. Yeah. The ghost bezel, etc. So, yeah, so it would be a Submariner. And um, one of my favorite uh, features in the new Submariner, and which is why it would be the one perfect watch, is the glide lock. Mm. Easy to adjust. Yeah, yeah so that, you know... When you have a big meal. Yeah, yeah. So or if you're inside <laughs> the aircon, or you're outside, or... Yeah. You're, you've participated in a lot of sports and activities. Yes. So that would be my answer for the 
one watch from my collection. Okay, so someone asked if it was anything not necessarily in your collection, what would that be? Well, personally, if I only had one watch and I could only choose one watch, and I don't want just one watch, uh, it would probably be a Sky Dweller, the mm. 326934 in stainless steel with the white gold bezel and the white dial. Now, why the white dial? I've been asked, I said, because the red the red pieces pop out. Namely, that's the the square for yep. the yep. month. And um, what's interesting about it is the what they call the Rolex ring command and the technology of setting the, the watch and whatnot. It's similar to the Yacht Master 2, sure. which never gets any love. But anyway, <laughs> I like the Sky Dweller and um, I guess that would be the one watch for me if uh, if I really had to choose for whatever reason, which <laughs> I hope we don't we don't ever have to go down that road. <laughs> and you, for me, uh, if it's the watch I currently own, it's the one six two six four um, Turnograph, and okay. I've explained this before um, and written about it and written about it before. Um, so I won't bore you guys too much with the uh, with the details. But uh, to sum it up very quickly, it was my first Rolex gift from my dad, and uh, it got me through some hard times and. Uh, it found its way back home to me, and that you know, for those reasons, the sentimental value. I think you know, if I if I had to absolutely had to get rid of everything else, um, that's the last one that would go. I guess Francis also likes the nickname Thunderbird. I do like the Thunderbird thing. <laughs> it's it's a cool nickname, Thunderbird, yeah. Thunder Aguila, yeah, <laughs> Thunderbird. So um, that is the watch that I currently own that would stay, and the if, one that's not in your collection. That is not in my collection. Um, it would be a one one six five twenty, um, the stainless steel Daytona. Okay. Um, you guys out there know black dial. Black dial. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very much a car guy, so that's for me the ultimate car guy watch. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's a watch that I have owned before, and um, I can't say regret ever selling it, but I do wish I still had one. Mm -hmm. On me, and that's probably the watch that I wish I still had. Teresa, if you're watching, it's Christmas, <laughs> and she'll say no. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Thanks, man. Coming back. Um, and yeah, so those are the um, those are the questions that were uh, sent to us from the reader. So, guys, thank you very much for uh, your support. And um, even if we're done with uh, this uh, this video, uh, please keep sending questions. You can do it on the YouTube channel. You can do it on Facebook. Um, just throw them at us. That wraps it up for uh, part one of this, and I hope you guys uh, uh, enjoyed us answering some of your questions. Merry Christmas, guys. Stay tuned for part two. What he said. Stay tuned for part two. <laughs>